So hi, I am Manoj Mahajan. So I'll be talking about app management and what's some exciting features that we have planned in Duke Pros. So let's dive into it. So first feature that we are coming up with is a retired action that we are introducing uh, in the allowed app policy. So basically here the problem is that, so if there are any particular devices which does not comply with your app management policy, for example, it has some prohibited apps installed on it and admin would like to retire that particular devices. So currently it's not an automated process, so they have to do it manually. So that's why we're seeing a retire option here which will allow admins to retire the devices which does not comply with your allowed app policy. Then we are introducing a search option. So in the install apps, there will be a search option here, which will allow you to search the apps based on uh, app name, but app name and model ID or package ID. Then we are coming up with an export feature in App Catalog. So basically, as you can see, this is a screenshot of App Catalog. So you will have a feature called export to CSV here. And once you click on that, you will export the details of all the apps and uh, their versions into the CSV file. So that's what we are coming up with in Q4 as far as app management is concerned. In productivity apps, uh, uh, on email plus site, we are coming up with the features uh, which will allow you to search for a specific folder in case of large number of folders. So challenge here is that, for example, if you have a large number of folders and you would like to uh, locate a specific folder, or you would like to move a specific email to specific folder, right? So it's not a very user-friendly process right now. So we are introducing a search option there where you can easily locate the folder and you can easily move your emails to different folders. So that's coming in Q4. And on Android side, we are coming up with a bit of feature which will currently, I think most of you know, you can see the events only for last 30 days in email plus calendar. So we are we are coming up with a features which will allow you to see the events older than 30 days also. So this feature is configurable via KVP. So if you would like your users to see the events more than older than 30 days also, you can enable this particular features and they will be able to see the events which are older than 30 days. So this is the roadmap for email plus along with um, the features I have mentioned the release. We have already released a 4.11 version with iOS setting compatibility and there was some UX improvement that we had planned in Q4. So we are introducing a feature which will allow you to schedule a app update. So for example, well, the many of you might require uh, require that all the apps which are installed on your user devices like Teams and Outlook should not get updated during the business hours. It should not disturb the users, right? So we are introducing a feature in EPMM now which will allow you to schedule your app updates also. So that's coming in Q4. And then on the admin experience side on on again on the epmm side we are coming coming up with a feature which will there was some discrepancy in the group if the group name that is group name remains the same if you move it to different group uh, within the different organization unit so we are solving this particular problem on the epmm side so that's all about the app management, the EPMM admin experience, what features we are coming are coming out with, and the email plus. Okay, we briefly talk about that. If you have any questions related to this, uh, please ask it. You can also drop it on the chat so that we can take this forward. Hi everyone, my name is Ed Sang. I'm part of the uh, SUAM group. Um, today we'll discussing some of the admin experience and MTD functionalities that will be coming in as part of the Q4 release. So let me get into some of the items that we've that we're looking to to roll out in yarns for MDM. So one of the kind of the primary focuses here is around the areas of uh, the cloud connector where wanting to to refresh the 
operating system of the cloud connector and admittedly we're a little bit uh, overdue on that uh, in that the centos uh, version of the operating system is no longer supported in the as part of um, the centos life cycle of the operating system goes um, so <clears throat> the update is to move towards the oracle linux 8 operating system and we'll be getting that updated in this in this upcoming quarter uh, along with that for some reason the let me get back to this there we go uh, along with that we're hoping that we can uh, enable some sort of uh, functionalities to provide a little bit of a nudge to update Cloud Connector and help enforce the the a more consistent and a more updated version of Cloud Connector in the uh, in the platform. Additionally, so we'll be introducing some notifications for you know Cloud Connector versions that aren't at uh, current versions. We'll be start to block and disable old versions of Cloud Connector. And again, just to provide that extra nudge to ensure that customers are seeing the best experience possible for, for the connector. Uh, we have a an Azure version of Cloud Connector that's in the works as a uh, proof of concept that a couple customers have asked for. So we'll be um, uh, introducing that as well. Um, moving to other areas of the admin experience, um, there's items such as um, allowing for the unscheduled reports to to not really count against the max limit of reports. That's an item that kind of was a, a minor, um, uh, you know, hurdle that customers had to kind of overcome. Uh, additionally, in the admin console tables, there's been a longstanding ask to help um, refresh the values in these tables. Uh, you can imagine that the users uh, table, the devices table, the apps tables all have values that uh, that may need to be updated while you're browsing the particular list. Uh, and so instead of having to refresh the entire page, uh, we're introducing a, just a, a, a functionality that just allows for an update of the values within the tables. Additional things that we're looking to explore and add in are a last check-in column in the policy violation report, and that'll uh, provide additional information when um, uh, when referring to the pilot policy violations. Um, additionally, we have some new updates um, coming into the the landing page dashboard and that's also to bring nerds for mdm closer aligned and and have a, a similar look and feel to that of our neuron suite of products and then one more thing to just uh call to your attention would be basically a, an ability to do to export the custom attributes from devices uh, specifically from the app inventory list. And that's also something that we're um, looking forward to bringing into the product. Uh, moving over to the MTD areas of, of SUEM, uh, we're going to be, you know, uh, really uh, putting our efforts into supporting the V5 console for uh, Zimperium. And that's going to be in the next quarter for new tenants. Um, it, following following the new tenants rollout, we'll be also allowing for migration of existing customers that are already there from the V4 version of the console to V5 in a in a subsequent quarter. So we're targeting you know the Q1 of the the upcoming year or migrations from V4 to V5. Uh, also, what V4 will bring to the table are some, like others will mention today, are the day zero uh, updates for both iOS and Android. And then finally on Lookout, there is going to be a dual enrollment personal profile type of functionality that will be included in the 
in the product. Uh, so that's the update uh, for the Q4 release for both the admin experience and MTD products. I'm principal product manager here at Devanti, heading our Google device management portfolio, uh, especially uh, we're going we're going to talk about Android Enterprise today. Uh, before I jump into the nitty gritties of what we are planning to deliver, I wanted to share with the audience here that we continue to strive for excellence and our products still remain very much ahead of where rest of our competition lies. So when it comes to Android Enterprise, our product is Android Enterprise recommended and our partnership with Google just received the recently uh, announced Android Enterprise Google partner uh, partnership status. So again, we have maintained these throughout the years and we are proud to do that and deliver on the promises that we thrive for on this particular platform. Uh, today, I just wanted to go into Q4, but before I do that, I wanted to emphasize that we are very much talking to a lot of you around line of business outcomes, whether it's reducing your TCO, whether it's improving your maintenance of fleet, whether it's simplifying your provisioning. So if you have any of these topics that you want to touch base on, please feel free to let your customer support teams know or your advocacy teams or sales teams that you're constantly in touch with so, so that we can have this conversation even further. So what are we bringing to Q4 on neurons for MDM for Android? First the and foremost thing that we always strive for is day zero compatibility. So our day zero release for Android 15 needs to go out ahead of uh, Google's plan to release Android 15. The AOSP support, which is what Google sends out to all other vendors, is out already. We do not com uh, claim compatibility with AOSP on Android 15 right away. Uh, because there's no vendor who actually has announced support for Android 15 right now. So if you hear AOSP going out, it basically means Google is just sharing binaries with all the vendors that are out there and Google themselves do not currently support Android 15. As soon as we get the word, we are ready to release our Android 15 support. We are maintaining the compatibility guide for any known issues that uh, we are aware of. Uh, and the plan to fix those. And also at the same time, uh, we are keeping touch with some of you on Android 15, new features and upcoming feature set, uh, what matters to you. So with that, we already have the beta for Android uh, Evanti Go client and mobile at work client. Uh, so if you want to test these out, uh, feel free to leverage them. So instead of going down this list, as you can see, our focus is predominantly on corporate owned business only, which is Kobo uh, slash frontline use cases, whether these are large fleets of devices or small fleets of devices, we believe there's a lot of similarity in, in terms of friction and in terms of business efficiencies that you may share between each other. So these feature sets are developed, keeping in mind, not just large customers, but at the same time, the line of business functionality and how can we help you to succeed. So let me take a uh, deep dive into some of this. Lost mode is coming to Android. Some of you and a lot of a lot of you have asked for lost mode to be made available on the Android platform. And we have made this innovation in the product now where you would be able to send a lost command to a device, let it display a message uh, you could add a phone number to the lock screen so that somebody who reads that message is able to send it, call you back. We also help you to play sound on the device. So if you're trying to find a device locally in your shop or in your IT warehouse or somewhere in your room, you would be able to do that. So this is very much in terms of functionality similar to Apple. Uh, what we already have from Apple, but this is something unique that Evanti has developed by, its, by itself. So now once you enable lost mode, you would see something like this on the screen. And if your device is capable of making calls, the person who has this device can simply click a button and it will dial that specific number that you had listed uh, in your lost command. 
So this helps for easy retrieval and also makes it easier for somebody to hand you the device back. If the device is locked, there will be an additional icon which is not shown here, which would be to unlock the device. So this is again something that you you would be able to take advantage of. We have had customers who uh, who have seen instances where the de device probably would have been misused. Uh, so this helps you prevent that. Moving on, uh, in terms of kiosk support, we are adding a new functionality to display notification alerts. So this requires a user permission on the device. So if you have an existing fleet, you may want to check with your OEM config or with your users or make them make sure that they expect this particular prompt so that they can allow this permission to be granted. So once you do that on the device, if you are not able to pre-approve the permission using OEM config, you would see a dialogue like this and your user would have to allow Evantigo app to receive notification access. Once that is done, going forward, notifications that come onto the device which are pending will show up with a small badge icon. So for example, here, there's a app called, I believe, Next or Notify app. You can see there's a small radio button or a red dot that's on top of the app icon that tells the user that there are pending notifications for that specific app. Evanti is able to look and understand notifications, but we are not going to pass the notifications or take any actions from the insights of notifications. We are only using notifications to calculate what is pending and which app does that notification correspond to. The next big thing that we are delivering as part of our Q4 is manual system update. If you have a large fleet of Zebra devices, you're probably aware of our Zebra functionality or integration there where you're able to simply use Zebra's photo service through our console and be able to manage your Zebra devices. We are bringing some functionality here for non-Zebra, non-Samsung devices, but you may have the firmware file and you may want to simply update the OS using that specific firmware file. So going forward, you will be able to take advantage of a file transfer configuration to push the firmware file to your devices. If you leverage this functionality, you would have to use our add-on license for, for the specific file to be transferred as it, as it crosses the 50 MB limit that we have on the file transfer functionality. However, if you want to host your own file, we always give you option to do that. So. The file transfer functionality makes the file available. And if you choose to use your own file, you would be able to host it as well. So I'm kind of repeating that to emphasize that there's a second step to it. Once the file is made available, that's when you create the system update configuration. The file transfer functionality is really for us to make the file available on the device, but the system update configuration is what takes action on that particular file. So if you have used file transfer functionality, the location of the file would be stored on the device and you would reference it with a custom attribute. And if you are using your own HTTPS URL, you would be able to simply point this system update configuration to that HTTPS URL provided there's no authentication that's required to access the specific firmware file. And from there on, you'll be able to execute this on Android 10 plus devices, which are non-Zebra or non-Samsung, as we exclude those vendors since their photo services are available. So again, it's something to give it, give it a try. If you are in that, if you struggle with firmware upgrades, and this is some functionality we believe you would definitely be able to make a huge benefit out of. And, uh, Next thing that we have done here is we have improved our shared kiosk logout experience or auto logout experience on a device restart. So if you are using shared kiosk, some of you have looked into this where a user logs in and if the device is rebooted, the user continues to stay, continues to be logged in into the device even after the reboot. And going forward, we will allow the device to be rebooted However, we'll make sure the user understands that this session 
is no longer valid and they have been logged out. So this is going to be automated. There's no server-side control to handle this functionality. On every device reboot, the logged in user will simply be logged out. And once the subsequent user tries to access the device, we will show them a message telling them something around devices being prepared so that they understand something is happening on the device and the experience is uh, understandable from the end user perspective. So here the device just went through a reboot. And if I have not paused this somehow, uh, you should see that particular message uh, show up on the screen. Next, moving to shared kiosk, Google Chrome app data functionality. This is something that some of you have started leveraging Google Chrome for authentication and you have experienced that clearing Google Chrome user app data does not work on all devices. And there was a very good reason for us to control that behavior because of the Google Chrome crash that we had previously observed on most of the hardware vendors. In one of our previous releases, we allowed Google Chrome app data to be cleared from devices where we will we were able to verify uh, the behavior was standardized. However, not all vendors can be validated by Vanti. So we are allowing customers to make that choice for their own hardware vendors that they deal with. So any devices except Lenovo, Samsung, and Zebra and if you have those devices and you want to clear Google Chrome's app data, you would have to ensure you check this button, which is below the app selection within shared kiosk. If you experience any issues, you can uncheck this button and make sure your device fleet is not uh, going through some kind of a Google Chrome crash throughout the day. So again, this is recommended for you to test before you deploy it widely. The next thing we are focusing on is the unlock passcode where we are making a subtle enhancement. Some of you have come to us with this particular request. So again, the, many of these things are being picked up from Avanti ideas. So if you want to put in your request, I would definitely recommend using Avanti ideas as a starting point. In this particular scenario, our customers wanted to control the passcode that's on the device from the admin console and not allow user to change that passcode uh, by providing a user reset prompt. If you're familiar with our unlock functionality, the moment you change the passcode, we prompt the user once they unlock the device to reset the passcode. However, you would be able to skip that reset prompt that we provide to the user going forward with a simple checkbox while using the unlock functionality. This will allow you to set a standardized lock or unlock, however you see it, on the device so that you can have central management on that passcode for all your devices. This one is definitely exciting. We are bringing a completely new way of managing Android devices on shared kiosk. If you think about with the different modes that we offer today, whether it's fully managed, whether it's uh, COPE or BYOD. This is going to be kind of a, a new mode altogether. However, we have simplified the deployment completely with a simple checkbox, which allows you to deploy segregated shared kiosk. If you are familiar with our shared kiosk today, you understand uh, we clear the app data when a user logs out, we let the second user log in, and that is a method that we have followed for quite some time. However, the underlying storage for these users is still shared and the storage is not segregated on a per user basis. We are introducing a beta where going forward, you would be able to deploy shared kiosk devices with individual segregated storage for users on that device. So if you have a user and they save some data during their session, that data will not be accessible to the subsequent user. However, once, they, once the previous user, the first user 
returns to the same device, their data is still going to be accessible on that device once they log in. So with this simple checkbox, you'll be able to deploy this whole new experience of shared kiosk, taking all the learnings that you have today. So we're not changing the admin learning curve. You, you don't have to learn anything. It's just going to be a, a completely new experience on the end user side. Even there, we have kept the end user experience largely intact, but you would definitely see a lot of new screens uh, from an end user perspective. So I highly encourage you to look into bait, the shared kiosk beta with segregated storage. We already have the beta released. So if you want to test this on Sandbox, it, you should be able to do that. And let us know if you want to access this and you do not have the needed Sandbox clusters, we would be able to turn this feature on specifically for your tenant. The new thing that we are allowing admins to do is uh, fetch the latest manager app config data. So if you have a Google Chrome app and you have saved managed app configuration uh, from Google, you would be able to leverage our new functionality, which is update to latest features. Going forward, we will not be dynamically updating the managed app config that an admin has created. However, we will allow you to click on update to latest features and provide you some warning messages that what you are going to proceed with is not going to be reversible and then show you what has actually changed. So what you are seeing here is the before data and the after data. Before is what you all have as of now. So as you can see in this column, some of these were unavailable. That means Google Chrome has added new functionalities in their latest version of managed app config. However, they have also removed a certain functionality and there may be many such more functionalities that you would be able to understand uh, better by going through this workflow. With this, you are able to make smart choices, educated choices for your deployment and ensure you are not going to experience a Chrome crash or any third-party app crash, which may have some compatibility issues between the versions that you have and between the managed app config. So again, we are providing admins the insight and the control to make the best and smart decision for their line of business. We hey, are Toshin, removing... this... hey, Toshin, I'm just doing a time check. We have about 20 minutes left. All right, I'm going to go faster then. So we have removed app removal. We are introducing new dashboards for battery uh, and reporting. So again, these are new functionalities that you would be able to take advantage of within the admin uh, dashboards. And on the EPMM side, we are doing the day zero Android 15 support. We are focusing on loss mode. Again, even there, we are extending loss mode to EPMM. We are providing some new functionality to connect to unverified airplane Wi-Fi's, and we are taking in some new bug fixes and some, some enhancements uh, requests there. All right, I'll give it to Yasune. Those of you that don't know me, my name is Yasune Batra. I'm a product manager here at Vanti. I manage everything that is from the Apple side, all the different platforms. It says here iOS and Mac OS, but we do have some updates on other platforms as well. So I'll be talking about that. And then I'm also the product manager for the Windows MDM side. So I'll have some few updates on that in both platforms, the Neurons for MDM and our EPM and platforms. So First of all, the main updates, of course, as everybody's interested, support for iOS 18 and macOS 15 has been a priority for this release. Um, everything that has been announced and released for our new Apple platforms. Declarative management, big topic. Uh, we keep continuing the integration of this new framework. As you know, declarative management is a big framework and we can support it. It is already supported. It's just an ongoing process. Uh, so in every new Apple release, we're going to have new declarative management features that are going to come. Some are just coming to replace what already exists. Our focus is always to give you the latest new features so you don't miss on any of the cool things that are coming. Um, so that's what you're going to see in the roadmap in general. All the new features that Apple is not even saying there's declarative management anymore. They just say these are the new features, but that's the way to go now. Some macOS management enhancements. 
and Ivantico enhancements. We have a really cool feature to share with you today. So first of all, making sure that everybody knows Apple Watch, we were the first in the market to support Apple Watch enrollment. So Apple Watch is already enrolled via the iPhone. You need a declarative management enabled iPhone. So I mentioned all the iPhones that are i15 and up in your Neurons for MDM consoles are already enabled with declarative management. So there isn't anything special that you have to do for it. They are just enabled. Uh, so you can push the enrollment key for the enrollment configuration for Apple Watch. Make sure that the Apple Watch is not linked yet. So once you push the configuration, <clears throat> then you can pair the Apple Watch to your phone and it's going to get enrolled automatically. These are the configurations that are already supported. If you go to your Neurons for MDM platform, you'll see now the Apple Watch symbol where all those configurations that are supported for it. In this end of Q4, we will be supporting app applications as well. Uh, so look out for that. If you are planning your deployment, applications that are iOS and Apple and an Apple Watch supported will be able to address them there as the use case. Yes. So next one, Apple Vision Pro also supported it when in our Neurons for MDM platform. You can enroll it, and there is a number of configurations and commands that are already there for you to, to start testing. If you have any feedbacks, just feel free to let us know. Application management is coming in the first half of next year. So yeah, very interesting. We have lots of different use cases today. Investment banking for traders that need a lot of screens at the same time. In the medical field, we have a lot of customers trying to find the use cases for it as well. Very interesting use cases. Feel free to contact us if you, if you have anything uh, specific on that and those new platforms. All right, now we're going into the features, new features that we're so are, we are supporting. So we are adding something to the software update enforcement uh, that came with declarative management. You may have seen this in the past. We already support this, the software update enforcement, where you can put a date and a time where the any device, any Apple device supported for iOS and macOS will update, right? So you put the version and you can put your um, time and date and the end user will receive several notifications until the device is forcefully updated, right? So no more asking the customer to defer, or to the end user to defer, you can use this. And the innovation that we are adding to this feature in this quarter is now you can choose the latest version. So you don't have to push a specific version. You just set up this configuration and we are going to fetch the latest Apple version for your platform directly from the Apple lookup. Look up so you don't have to, it, it just uh, completely automated basically, right? You put the latest version, you set up when you want, I don't know, 30 days after it was found, you can push the update automatically and you forget about your updates about you know Apple updates um, and making sure that your fleet is updated. So that is coming. Um, another thing that comes with that is you're going to have real-time updates of what's happening on the devices. So you will have in your device details what is the pending version that is going to be upgraded. And also in device logs, you'll have what is the status with the real-time status of is it downloading? Is it installing? Did it fail? And also a reason, if it failed, why it failed. So that is also available now in Q4. New things for iOS 18 and macOS 15. So Apple wants to completely deprecate the old way of the schedule OS updates and update OS enforcement, the, the old MDM protocols. So they are giving us a lot of the different features we used to have before on the end user side as well. So now with declarative management, new you're going to see it's just another configuration that I mentioned. You don't even have to think about if declarative management is not declarative management. You have this available now that you can set up the standard user can upgrade a Mac OS. For example, if you want to allow the end user to do automatic actions for installation, we're going to have the deferrals. You will be able to configure those notifications that I mentioned before, how the behavior of rapid security response 
and also recommended cadence when it actually shows for the end user to allow them to upgrade, right? So more controls are coming in this release. Another big feature that customers have been asking for a while is the battery health. Uh, so you, you go to your iPhone or your Mac OS, you can see which your battery health is. Is it normal? It needs to be changed, needs to be serviced. And now Apple has given us the, a way to query that field. It's also the cloud management status. I mentioned it doesn't really matter. For you, it's going to be seamless. Um, that you can see now the battery health so you proactively can service any device if in need of it. So you will see and you can query which devices have your battery health, you know, for example, on the service recommended state. Uh, something that we added on, on proactively is the all the Apple intelligence restrictions. Uh, even though Apple intelligence is not going to show up until October, uh, this was already made available for Apple. So we made it available for you as well in the console. So you have all your restrictions and we actually moved it up so you can see them right now in your console. Uh, if you can start, you can start preparing and creating your configurations for that. Make sure that this is only available for a certain number of devices. We have a KB that is very specific in the type of devices because they need a specific hardware, right? So only iOS 15 Pro and up, and then iPads that have an M1 chip and also the, sil the Mac OS Silicon will have the Apple intelligence available. Uh, so... If you want to block them for, for some reason, well, that that's those are the devices that are going to get this iOS 18.1 update, uh, and then we'll have those features available. So anything else that is not supported with this 18.1, they will not get the Apple intelligence versions. Uh, another big feature that people have been asking a while, so I just want to this is just an update. So there is the RCS message, message that in, introduced Apple in iOS 18. I know some customers are concerned about those. And Apple heard our feedback that customers would like to block them. We know that it's already live in iOS 18. Uh, unfortunately, Apple just hasn't provided the, the, the controls for it in iOS 18. So they announced that it's coming in iOS 18.1 is restriction to block the RCS messaging. It is not there, so it's not available in the betas yet, uh, but we know it's coming because we saw it in documentation. So we will be monitoring this closely and we'll provide an action plan uh, as soon as we have more details. So it's just a quick update that we have a um, KB article out there that you can follow and you'll get the, the updates from there. Other features are, are coming in Q4 due to the iOS 18 and macOS 15 releases. So now the VPN configuration has new keys. Um, the, this PPK features identifier, and you can also see if it's mandatory. Uh, now also, the we added cellular slicing last year. So you can add any application to pick a specific cellular slice. Now you can even create a VPN, a per app VPN for a specific slice as well. So Apple is really working with the carriers in trying to get a very customized um, use cases or usage of the, the, the bandwidth of the devices, so the traffic and how it, it, it is handled. So now you can choose, as I mentioned, a specific app to use a slice on the 5G network. And now you can even tunnel with a per app VPN a specific traffic as well. Safari extensions, this is something that customers have been asking for a while as well, and we didn't have controls directly from the MDM. Uh, you used to have to go to Safari management and do it from there, but now we can push a configuration to allow some extensions, disallow them, or you can even pick which uh, the, of those domains are allowed or disallowed. So this is a good enhancement that customers have been asking for a while. Also, the disk management for Mac OS 15, as you know, Apple disabled the media management. They deprecated that, and uh, this has been something that customers have been asking for a while. So finally, we have it, a replacement for that media, media management configuration. So now we can allow or disallow read-only uh, some external storages and the network storage as well. Just want to make sure that we all are aware the the extensible single sign-on the platform SSO is supported with Microsoft Entra 
for our Mac with our Mac OS. So you can configure directly your Mac OS. We added a key that we were missing that is a screen lock behavior, and now everything is handled and you can natively configure your platform SSO with Microsoft Entra ID. Also new keys that are coming for Mac OS 15 on the platform SSO. I'll just go quickly. You can read them in documentation later. And this is the one of the most innovative features that we have, the return to service. We had many customers, especially in the healthcare space, where they have devices on their floor that they pass from patient to patient, right? So they, by regulation, of course, they need to make sure, make sure that those devices are completely clean and deleted. But then there was always like, how do we delete it and make sure that it is easily and seamlessly enrolled again and provisioned again, right? So that was kind of an overhead. So we've added a new key that it's called return to service. It's based on one of Apple's features that were released last year. Um, so in your event to go, you can, any end user can go there, just click the return to service. It will ask, of course, do you want to wipe the device because it's gonna wipe the device completely, but automatically re-enroll it in DEP and now ADE uh, and provision the device uh, seamlessly with minimal end user interaction. So any of the nurses or, or the, the floor staff kind of need to pass it quickly to another patient. They just go do the return to service. It will ask if they want to wipe, if we want, and what, what's going to happen. And then it will wipe completely the device, everything in there, and it will start the re-enrollment in DEP from scratch. So all the the the, wi the Wi-Fi configuration that was basically what it's needed. It's gonna be pick the one that has the top priority for that device, and then it's just going to enroll automatically and provision all the applications and all the different configurations automatically. So minimal interaction for the end users. Windows Roadmap, we have a few updates so we can filter the page, the updates page. This is also a customer request. It was difficult to find where the new Windows 11 features were coming, for example. This is another important feature, the Windows Labs configuration. Now we can rotate labs from here. We had the configuration enabled. Now we are adding the new key for rotating the, the password. Uh, we are going to do some certificate step enhancements that we're missing, and of course, working on the Windows 11 24H2 supporting uh, the new update that it's coming. Quickly on EPMM, also make sure that that you know that Apple Watch is also available to for enrollment in EPMM. Um, so all the configurations are available. Also, the software update enforcement status is coming. Uh, as I mentioned before, same thing as the new, the new settings are also going to be available in the Q4 release. Uh, new restrictions, actually, we moved them up as well. So they are in 12.2 available already. You don't have to wait for 12.3. Uh, some key, uh, key items as well. These are also new. And this is a specific request from the team from Europe that our, um, for we, we have a web clip that works for the the enrollment or not the signing for multiple users on a device and we needed to factor authentication for that web clip and we are adding that as a compliance for the dora act in the eu and that's it that's it for me